Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Right on our strength. Talking sprint car racing. Our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Another I mean, weekend at Another car weekend. Racing. I got more sprint car racing in. But hey, I, I needed to go back. Okay? Now, I talked about last week. It's situated here. Talked about last week. I was in Pennsylvania. Yep. And I ran into one of your buddies. Oh, boy. George Supra. Oh, yeah. Real oh, buddy. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> yeah. ran into George. Now, George, Gosh, and I haven't you, seen you two before. used to race together yep. in the 360 world yep. up in uh, the ESS and Patriots or wherever you're at yep. up there, right? Okay. George is from Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. He was my mechanic working on my street car. Okay. And we also hung out at the same bar, the only bar. Okay. Um, so he comes running up, and it was like, man, I haven't seen George in a I, while. Um, I saw him last. He is, uh, he is doing well. Um, Sharon, his wife, did you ever hang out with Sharon much? Yes, a little bit. A little bit. Sharon is wide open. <laughs> yeah. um, she's had they were some, a good fit. They were, they, yes, they are yeah, what you call a really good couple. <laughs> uh, because when it came time to partake, they were all in. <laughs> uh, we did multiple times at their place, at the only place, or wherever else. Um, George and Sharon's just great people. Now, Sharon's had some medical challenges here recently, but I know last week George got her home, and okay. um, she's going to be, she's got, got, some, got some things to overcome, but I guess she's doing all right. And, uh, but George is just his normal self, and uh, because of some of the stuff Sharon's been going through, hasn't raced as much as he'd like to, but he's got everything ready to go, and he's itching <laughs> to get going, so, and he watches Wing Nation every week. Oh, so, awesome. They watch it, I think, Wednesday night. So, um, George and Sharon, good to see you. And Sharon, we wish you the best with your with your recovery on that. I, I the, last week, like when I'm doing all my notes and everything like that, I'm like, there's something missing. There's something missing. Yeah. And like on Thursday last week, I'm like, oh man, I needed to, I needed to make sure because I knew he's he's your buddy too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. What a Way great back. guy. Oh my gosh, what a great racer too. Yes. Boy, he had a lot of success up. He did. He is sure. a great, great racer, and mm -hmm. uh, a great sense of humor. Oh gosh, yes! I first met him. He 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 drug a modified into Penn Can Speedway, and so I'm there. I'm the track announcer, and I'm writing down you know, George Super at Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And he was just very blunt. He said, "This is just a step to go sprint car racing for me." And of course, I'm the modified guy, and I'm like, "Well, why use us as a stepping stone?" Yeah. I'm well, just you like, didn't like sprint cars back well, then. Well, yeah, I had some yeah. bad experiences yeah. with sprint cars. Yeah. By this point, I was probably neutral on them. Um, and then George, and then I moved to Clark Summit. Well, then we become friends. And then the next thing I know, I'm riding to Clinton County with him on Friday nights. And so um, we just, uh, it, it, George is one of those guys I haven't talked to him in forever. And it was like once once we caught up on everything, it was like the conversation just Old continued times. on. Yep. Um, just wonderful, wonderful folks. So, again, George and Sharon, we certainly, uh, certainly um, uh, great, great to catch up with you, George. That's for sure. Um, Friday night, we, you mentioned this. I did get to go see our friends at USCS at Bulls Gap at Volunteer Speedway. Oh, love that place. Me too. Love those people. Uh, got to talk to Terry Gray. Got to talk to Morgan Turpin. Got to talk to Danny Smith. Got to talk did to you, Eric, Did um, Pete Walton talk to you at all? Pete Walton talked to me a little bit. Yes, I know. Pete, uh, Pete, Pete and I had a good visit. Pete is a <laughs> I love talker. Pete. Pete is a talker. <laughs> and so, yep, yeah, um, they are rolling along. 25th season of USCS. And... Um, I think Danny Smith told me they're down to like eleven or something like that to go. Which, which the, to yeah, go. I mean, which like Every the world of Outlaws are at nine. <laughs> the world of Outlaws are at nine to go. That's like Pete, but but see, Pete just uses that. I mean, he just goes. He yeah. just goes. They've got the flip flop fifty coming up in a little bit, and um, and that's not to say that they won't add a bunch of Pete races Moore. also. Yeah. I mean, Pete Walton ain't scared to have a race, and uh, so it was great catching up with everybody. I love the USCS uh, Bulls Gap was fun. Uh, Jared Hortzman picked up the win. Jared's from Northwestern Ohio, runs with the NRA and a bunch of series up there. So he picked up the win on Friday night. And a kid that I met and uh, when I was over at I-30, uh, Landon Britt from over in the Memphis area, picked up the win on Saturday night. Wow. So they've got really good stuff going on there with, uh, with USC. So let's get into it. Let's get into our hot topics. After Racing Products Hot Topics. I love generational racers, Aaron. Um, out on the West Coast, Ronnie Day. Was a racer. Do yep. you do you remember Ronnie yes. Day? Okay, uh, two thousand Golden State Challenge, King of the California champion. He's won the Trophy Cup, the Johnny Key Classic, the Memorial, Dur the the um, Jim Raper Memorial Dirt Cup up at Skagit. Okay, Ronnie has a fifteen year old son, Corey, 
that's just started racing. Okay? Corey ran a couple of 360 races last year. Earlier this year, he picked up a 360 win up in Oregon. Okay? I'm watching on Flow Racing on Saturday night. It's the, um, what was the race? It was the Jim Turner Memorial. You got Tim Kading up there dueling it out with some kid. Corey Day, 15-year-old racer, and he took it off from Tim Kading and won the race. Pretty impressive. Yeah, first career 410 win for Corey Day. So I think the headline that Jim Allen had in the press release is the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I'll say not. <laughs> kid, is, kid was wheeling that car. I love to see all the the younger generation right now. Like there's there's some serious talent, and it's across the board. I, I was looking at the Trans Am race this weekend. A 15 year old kid, I think uh, yeah. Nick Tucker had a, a car there that he was on the pole. First ever Trans Am race for a brand new team, and sits on the pole. We had the Martinsville Late Model Stock Race, yeah. the Valley Star Credit Union 300. A 16 year old from Amelia, Virginia, picked up the win. He, yeah. He'd won one Late Model Stock. I think he'd won one Late Model Stock race prior to that, Crazy. and. Um, and and Landon Pembleton was his name. And I mean, and this kid was flawless. I'm not I'm not saying, you know, sometimes the Martinsville race just turns into a brawl. Yeah. <laughs> there was no brawling. It was clean, good, hardcore, clean racing. And you had a couple of kids and a couple of veterans right. up there. And this kid took it, including late restarts with Mike Looney, who's a former winner mm-hmm. of this race, including taking it to him yeah. and winning the race. So young mm-hmm. drivers are so good. And, and Corey Day adds to that. Central Pennsylvania, Sealands Grove, the Jim Nason Memorial. Speaking of young racers, Anthony Macri. Yeah. His 11th 410 win of the season. That's kind of snuck up a little bit. Yeah, it has. You know, when you add that up, all of a sudden, because he's had those West Virginia wins and two at Sealands Grove and two at Williams Grove. And next thing you know, it's like a couple here and a couple here, and you're into double digits. Williams Grove, we're going to talk to this rascal, (laughs) Brian Brown. How long has he been going over to Pennsylvania? And he finally got his career first Williams Grove win. Ah, so great to see. Um, and Danny the Dude, Lasoski, and Victor Lane with him. How about I that? love that combination. That is, that is cool. Good stuff. We're going to talk to Brownie. How about uh, another guy? Now, he's, he's not quite as young as some of these kids, but Paul Neenheiser. Friday night, he won the 410 race at Jacksonville. Sunday, he won the Sprint Invaders 360 in East Moline. So, good weekend for Paul. He's up to seven wins this season. Houston, Saturday night, Justin Henderson. Speaking of kids, and, and Henderson, by the way, well, okay, speaking of sneaking up, 12 wins this year. I was just going to say, how many does he, he have? He has seven this? 410s yeah. and five 360 wins. It's like we get to the stage where it's like we talk about, well, Henderson, uh, well, wait, he's had a dozen wins this it's year. A good year. That's a good year and a Houston's championship. Okay, we talk about kids. We had this kid on. Ryan Timms won his fourth 410 race at Houston's. <laughs> He'd been running St. Francis and places down near, down yeah. in the middle part of the country. But he went up to Houston's and, and Brooke Tatnell and Justin Henderson. He tugged down all those guys, Superman's cape, and just went yeah, there and whooped them. Yeah, if you can win at Houston's, you're... Man, it's just another kid. We had, like I said, and uh, he's, a, he's at 13 wins this season. I mean, <laughs> when you look at this year, I mean, I, I understand we're late in the game, but there's Still. been a bunch of guys that has racked up a bunch of wins. And it's good to see other winners. Our World of Outlaws, Logan Schubert and, Schubert and David Graff. We're going to mm-hmm. talk to David also. Rico won with the All-Stars at Eldora. Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association, Corey Crabtree won. I love this. Jake Hessen at Atomic Speedway, career first. How about that? There you go. We are in a crisis situation here because I'm like an idiot and forgot to print out (laughs) notes. So we have one page of notes here and a whole bunch of other pages of notes for future shows coming up, but nothing for today. (laughs) So right now we need to talk about Hefter Racing Products and their mule conversion kits. Boy, if there's one thing I know about, it's what it takes to make a great mule, Aaron. I know. And it's your expertise. You know, driving expertise. and, you know, being oh, a mechanic. Oh, exactly. That's they just... start with a Yamaha chassis, and they build a mule that is tough enough that even I can't put it in I the I know. Garage. And you really, you even learn that it's a mule and not a bull. I mean, well, you've come a long too. way. Well, we have come a long way in about a year and a half. Do you remember right that, episode? that episode? That episode, yeah, I called it a bull. I was like, what is, I didn't even know what you were talking about. I was looking yeah, at him like, am I missing something? Yeah, What's yeah. happening here? Yeah, it was just oh, a bunch of bulls. But you've come a long way. Now you're, now, you're. Now I know what they're called. Yeah, you've driven I know one. it's a solid Yamaha chassis. You almost ran over Mark Weber. Right, right. They have, well, let us aside that. All the accessories, so all the shelving and the racks and everything like that. Yep. You can put all that together, and you have got yourself the a, shelving in the racks. The shelving just, in the racks. What, what exactly. do they put on the shelving in the racks? You can put oh, you can have shocks in there. Ooh, you can put all of your your sealants and your coolers and your CRC and things like that in there. Your wrenches, your tools. You put them all. Everything you need to take to the work area. 
I'm impressed exactly. that you knew that, yeah. that much mechanics Seven eighths came inch up. wrench you always keep in your pocket or whatever it is. Or what is it? No, five eighths inch screwdriver. Nine, you need a five eighths inch yeah. screwdriver in your pocket. You don't need that in the mule. You need that in the pocket. Oh, I know this about this. This is great. Thing. This is getting good. You talking about the mechanical? Oh, you aspects. tell you kidding me? You kidding me? Sign me up. Where are the marshals? Come on, hire me to hire me to be on there. I'll be right out there with Drew. You know, just say, you'll stuff. be in all the work area. I'll be right on the work area with Drew. Yeah, right in there. Drew and the postman you got in there. Similar with hair. hair flowing. That's right. Exactly. One of us accomplishing things and one just gumming everything up. Um, but again, you can find out more about the great line, not only the mules, but all of the shop accessories and everything else at www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. It just goes to show you sometimes, sometimes going off strip, script might be a better ad yes. than what we had I mean, written I, down. I got to. In the notes that are sitting that. on my printer or somewhere here in the building or in, <laughs> in the cloud, in the cloud for sure. Hey, before we get to our break, we talked about Corey Day just a little bit. Let's take a look and a listen to it. It is the NARC King of the West Tour. It is Saturday night at Tita Murphy's Keller Auto Speedway. It is Corey Day and Tim Kading going at it. Here's our friend Bobby Gerald with the call on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. Corey Day's really coming on strong in the 14 car, and now Day takes the lead. Kading comes back on the outside, but the 14 has a nose in front. They go side by side down the back straight away. Neither driver gives an inch into turn number three. Who's it gonna be? Tim on the top, Corey Day on the bottom. Give it to the 15-year-old, Corey Day. That death-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death. The official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Pride. Passion. Performance. We are. We are. We are Team Dryden. Over 200 events from coast to coast, and they're celebrating 30 years of scattering soil. The American Sprint Car Series, the world's largest sprint car sanctioning body, and bringing more thrills with wing and even more non wing action in 2021. 11 regional tours, the national tour. No matter where you are, we're coming to a track near you. Can't be there? Get double streaming fun with Racing Boys and GoRacing.com, bringing all the adrenaline to your favorite streaming device. See the full lineup of this now at ASCSRacing.com. You absolutely love when someone works hard at something and puts a lot of effort and a lot of energy into it and finally accomplishes it. And, and Brian Brown's just phenomenal career he's got going on in sprint car mm -hmm. racing. He's, he's, he's done it all. He's, he's won so many times. But there's been one thing that has not gotten with him until Friday night is Williams Grove Speedway. And he joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline after winning at Williams Grove on Friday night, Brian Brown joins us. Hello, Brownie. Welcome into Wing Nation. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing today? We are doing well. Brownie, what does it mean to you now to have the checkered flag to be a Williams Grove winner? Yeah, like I said in Victory Lane, you know, growing up as a kid, there's, you know, in my opinion, there's only a handful of tracks that have a lot, a lot of history, um, you know, just from the days when the Outlaws have been there from day one. And, um you want to win in every single track you go to, but, you know, there's some that are iconic. And, you know, Knoxville, you know, is one of them. You know, Eldora is one of them. Um, Williams Grove is one of them. Um, on the West Coast, you have Chico and places like that. So, um, yeah, to to be able to, to put our name on a, on a feature winner list at Williams Grove, um, you know, that's pretty pretty remarkable. It's uh, the toughest half mile in the country. You know, you think it's just a half mile, you run around there as hard as you can, but, so much goes into it, you know, from the start of the night to the end of the night and just um, the way you drive, the way you lift, where you pick up the throttle. Just uh, I've left so many times there, just go across that bridge, leaving the track, just mad at the world because we just can't figure it out. And just because we won there one night doesn't mean we got it figured out, but I think we're heading in the right direction. Brian, you talk about putting the whole night together. I think after the race you mentioned, or you just said sometimes you left there frustrated, but in the past you've been – You've qualified good. You've run decent heat races. But this time you were able to put it all together. 
What what was maybe different in the feature? Was it some setups you've worked on? Is it some driving things like you talked about picking up the throttle different places? What 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 helped you put the whole night together? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of all that. Um, I just felt like, you know, usually what happens, we qualify good, we run good in the heat, we're really good in the dash, and we're just like, okay, let's just don't touch it, leave it alone, let's don't mess this up. And then we don't make the right adjustments, we don't make any adjustments, and, you know, basically the car's identical from how we unloaded it, you know, for hot laps. I go out for the feature and we get beat. Um, I just feel like that I'm I'm just kind of holding on and blocking and not trying to, not really being offensive, racing more defenses just because my car is not what I need. It's not doing what I need to do. And I just talked to Danny after we left there uh, at the all-star show and said that we cannot come back here next week and do the same thing. I don't care if we win the dash by two laps, we cannot do the same thing again. We have to make adjustments that we feel like that we're missing. And, um, you know, he, um, he made some great, great calls, great adjustments. And, and I think too, like I said before, it, it's, I've watched more video of Williams Grove the last month and a half than I have probably any track my whole career. Just trying to figure it out, trying to watch Lance and 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 guys that are really really good there and seeing, you know, it, trying to pick up as much um, data as you can because you're not going to be able to walk over to a guy like Lance DeWeese and say, hey, uh, what do you lift at on the back stretch when it does this? I mean, you got to learn on your own. And um, like I said. We put a lot of work into it, um, still a work in progress, but I like the progress we're making. And like I said, I'm looking forward to uh, to the National Open this weekend. Ronnie, a couple years ago, you and I had talked about this, and you had said, you know, Knoxville's a very round half-mile racetrack. Fort Royal's round. Sealands Grove is even rounder. And, and you had said you really felt comfortable at those places and getting around there. Is it that paperclip nature of Williams Grove that just makes it challenging, not only for you, but for but honestly, for anybody who goes in there the few few times, is it just because of the nature of those those tight turns there? Yeah, it is. And, you know, you can't – there's only a few times I feel like throughout the night that you can run wide open. Um, you know, you can at times, but, um, you know, uh, as it slows down and it goes from 16-second laps to 20-second laps, you obviously cannot run wide open. And, you know, where you lift off the throttle – you know, kind of makes your car do different things, as Aaron knows. Um, um, you just and you can change. You can only work on your car so much and get it to do what you need it to do, but you still have to drive it. I mean, it's still, this is not a remote control car. You have to be able to. The driver has to do things inside the car with both feet and say, "Okay, that was good," you know, or "That was that was a good lap," or "That was a good corner," or "Man, I." it did this, what do I need to do the next time I get back to it? Because really the ends are two different ends, too. One's a little sharper. Mm-hmm. Three and four I feel like is quite a bit sharper. Um, one and two is more of a sweeping corner. Um, so, yeah, it's just – it's hard. Like I, it, it is hard. There's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's there's nothing easy about Williams Grove. And what makes it even harder is if you make three or four really good laps, the track changes so much, and it may be on the bottom for a while, and then it may move to the top, and now here comes guys through the middle. It is it is very tough. I mean, as tough as any place I've gone gone in the country. And I think that's what makes winning so satisfying is, you know, being able to accomplish something, you, you know, a goal that you put in your head that you wanted to do before you hung it up. And um, it was pretty awesome to be able to do that last Friday night. Brian, when we talked to you at Knoxville, you had just recently started really working with Danny. And you talked a lot about his driver advice for you, for you at Knoxville. And you were wondering why he had kept those secrets for you from you for so long. Was he also helpful as far as like you're talking about, about where to lift and how to keep the car underneath of you as far as driving at Williams Grove? Yeah. Um, and, but I, I feel like that he's kind of just been, he's kind of a straight shooter and, you know, he's basically said, Hey, I wasn't that great at Williams Grove either. You know, he's not like trying to build it up as he's a 10 time track champion there, you mm-hmm. know, of, Hey, this is, I know exactly what to do. It's good that I can say, hey, man, what do you think if I, I'm doing this too soon or too late or here? Is that, does that make sense? This would, make our, would be making our car do that. And he's good at saying, yeah, that does make sense. Or no, I, you're, you're, I don't think that would be doing it. Um, just where he's driven before, it just opens up a whole new avenue of communication that, you know, that somebody hasn't driven before wouldn't know. And you know, if I say, hey, man, I'm tight. You know, like when you go down in there and you feels like this thing, your right front fell off. That's how tight I am. He understands what that means um, versus a guy that hasn't driven. So uh, he did a good job. I've, I've, I've ran him around a lot um, just 
trying to get my car doing more comfortable for me at Williams Grove. And it's like there's not been one time that he's got frustrated with me and just said, hey, you have to just, it's your fault or you have to drive it. If you're doing something wrong, he's just like, oh, you just keep saying, we'll make it better. We'll make it better. We'll make it better. And as a driver, that's what you, that's what you want to hear. And, um, you know, him, um, Nate Steinhouse, my dad, Robert, uh, Ben Engel, who helps us win Pennsylvania, they did a, did a good job. And like I said, without support from Casey's and FEP and all of our great partners, we wouldn't be able to go out there and spend a month and be able to learn and try to, uh, you know, have a, have a good shot or a good opportunity this weekend at, you know, the Champion Oil National Open, which is one of our marquee events on, on the schedule. Brian, one of the things Williams Grove does, they do a tune-up night. They do the format, and you've, you've spent time in our first answer talking about putting a whole night together. I understand it's different when the world of outlaws because of the depth of competition and everything, but that that format, getting a chance to practice that format the week before has got to be gold for all the teams there that were there on Friday night. Yeah, I definitely think they do a, a good job of, of, um, um, of, of having the format you know, doing a week, you know, an outlaw format prior, a week prior to, um, it's been a tune-up, outlaw tune-up for me since I got there September 1st <laughs> or whatever it was, because yeah. those guys are, are outlaw fast. There's four or five guys there that, or maybe even more, that have legit possibility of beating the outlaws this weekend. So I always feel like when I go in there, if I can be in the realm of, of Dietrich and Macri and, and DeWeese, um, and I'm sure I'm leaving leaving others out. If I can see those guys and be racing and mixing it up with those guys, I feel like those are the guys that are going to be in contention to beat those guys this week. So that's kind of what I've judged myself on is, okay, am I how much slower am I than those three? Or am I better than those three? And there are times of the night that I'm, that I'm better. I feel like I'm qualifying better than those guys. But come race time, feature time especially, I feel like I'm behind those guys. So, yeah, um, Williams do- Grove does a phenomenal job. Um, I'm not a big fan of their formats they do on their weekly show with the, the point deal average. I don't think that's right, and I think that's something they probably should look at long term, but that's not my choice. But I think the uh, the outlaw tune-up is definitely something that, um, other than double fall restarts, is pretty much an outlaw format. Brian, with all that said about this past weekend, you know, racers are never really satisfied. When you When you look at your win this weekend, were there still things you can take away that maybe you learned during that feature that you think can even make you a little bit better next week? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I felt like that. Um, and once I got the lead, I felt like I just kind of, you know, ran about 80%. Um, and, you know, I got past with four to three to go by Devin Borden in behind the lap car. So yeah, definitely. I don't feel like that. Like I said earlier in the interview, I feel like that just because you won there mm-hmm. on Friday night doesn't mean, oh man, we've got this. We've got this figured out. We're probably going to beat the Outlaws this weekend too. It's definitely probably not. That's an unrealistic goal probably. Um, so yeah, we have to say, okay, this is what we did to our car and this worked. All right, when this situation arises again, this is what we have to do and maybe go a little bit less or a little bit more depending on the track condition. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's you're only as good as your last race and, you know, we won Friday, but we got got our butt whipped Saturday. So like I'm I'm probably more mad about Saturday at Feelings Grove than I am about happy at Friday night just because of I felt like I let one slip away at the Jim Nace Memorial there. Um but that's part of it. That's what keeps us going. That's what makes us uh wanna do it. And when I don't want to decide that running third from the front row uh doesn't bother me and doesn't burn inside, that's when probably be time to do something different. Boy, you're you're yeah. you're absolutely right about that, Brownie. Real quick before we say goodbye to you here, are you? Did you stay in Pennsylvania this week? How have you been? Have you been staying over there some? Have you been traveling back and forth? How how's that working for you? The back and forth or or staying? Nope, I've actually been there the whole entire time. I had my niece's birthday on Sunday, so I actually come home for a couple of days. So I'm I'm back in Casey's General Store country. I got me some Casey's coffee in front of me, so I'm here uh, here. Here enjoying some Casey's breakfast and um yeah, looking for it's good to get home for a couple of days, but you know, your 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 feet are planted in Missouri, but your heart and your and your mind is in Pennsylvania, just making sure. Um I'm probably more you know, really since July first when all this, you know, crew change, I feel like I'm more invested and more just cannot get enough of this racing as I've it probably it's almost struck another fire inside me just to be to even be better than I even was prior to, and just I'm all in, man. I just want to I want to do good, and I want to do good for our partners, and I want to win every race. And um, I feel like that 
we have the we have the the team, uh, we have the backing, we have everything to do that. Just uh, got to put it all together. And like I said, I can't wait to get back to the Williams Grove on Friday. Never thought I'd say that. I can't, <laughs> can't wait to get back to Williams Grove on Friday and um, and get racing. I think that too is mindset. You'd be surprised. Yeah. You go to the drivers' meeting and like there, I'd say. I don't know, maybe when, this, when there's an all-star show, an outlaw show, there's probably 75% of the people that their drive is like, man, I can't wait for this to be over. This, I hate this place. This sucks or this whatever. And yeah. I don't really see how you could ever have success with that mindset going in. Like, you've got to believe that you can, this place is just another half mile that you have to race a little bit different. And I can't wait to get back there. And hopefully that gives me a little bit of good mindset going into it. And like I said, looking forward to it. It's, an awesome event, man. Like there's not many places we go throughout the year that gets, has the electricity in the air that, um, the national open does, you know, Knoxville nationals does Kings Royal does Port Royal does now. Um, Jackson nationals did just that electricity in the air that you can look around and say, man, this is, this is a big event. Um, let's go, you know, let's get after it. Yeah, it sure is a special event. And I need to quickly say that Kate wanted me to say hello and congratulations. Oh. Yeah, you're your biggest fan this morning. I told her we were I having know, you on, and she I, said, you are? I think if she wasn't yeah. in school, she'd be here in studio trying to chat with you. Yeah, she's the best. Uh, <laughs> she missed the Knoxville Nationals Thursday night. She fell asleep on me. I so know, I, that darn rain have delay. To, yeah, have to get her in victory lane. Yeah, she's, uh, she's awesome. You're, you're lucky to have her. Thank you. I agree. Neat stuff, that's for sure. Brownie, she's best. got the wrong. She's got the wrong kind of horsepower, though. Like we, we've got to I, somehow roll that over. To, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's kind of scary. I mean, she can't go fast enough on the horse, so I'm a little bit concerned about putting her in, in something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. something more horses. Yeah. yeah. Even her in, her trainer said that she's like, "Man, this girl wants to go fast." I'm like, "Oh, can't don't imagine ever where she got that from." <laughs> can't imagine where she got that desire to go fast from. Well, she'll have her shirt, her Brian Brown shirt on this weekend. We'll be cheering for you. There you go. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. And awesome. thanks for thanks for having me on, guys. I, I, I appreciate you guys do a phenomenal job and being able to be on with you guys and, and talk about a big win at Williams Grove is awesome. And uh hopefully uh if I do something good next weekend, maybe we could do this again next Tuesday. Well, you do that and we'll do our part too as well. That sounds good. Brownie, uh have have fun this weekend up there. All right, you guys take care. Thanks for everything. There we go. Brian Brown. We are running late. We need to get to our next guest. I was there for the all-star race, and Brian Brown is 100% right. 50% mm. at least of the drivers I talked about could not wait for Williams Grove to be over yeah, with. Yeah, and if you go in like that, you're usually Fascinating not, yeah. stuff. Great, great stuff from Brownie. A lot of technical. Yeah, getting a little deep on yeah, us. Yeah, got a little Brian. deep on us there. Good stuff, <laughs> that's for sure. Speaking of good stuff, and speaking of knowing his way around Williams Grove, David Gravel's going to join us here in just a moment. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as Lionel and Chase Authentics Apparel Distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World, Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. And on orders over $20, use promo code MRN for free shipping. Check them out, CircleBDiecast.com. Sunoco is a proud partner of Wing Nation. Not all fuels are created equal, so fill up with Sunoco Ultratech. Sunoco Ultratech is a top-tier detergent gasoline that is proven to make your engine run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. Using the same detergent package as what is blended into some of Sunoco's high-performance race fuels, you can trust Ultratech for your everyday race. Whether you're headed to the track or just hitting the road, fill up with Sunoco Ultratech and fuel your best. Let's go back to the Dry Dean Hotline. Joining us fresh off from a trip to Victory Lane at Lernerville Speedway in the Commonwealth Clash on Saturday night, David Gravel joins us. Hello, David. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, Steve. How are you? I am doing well. Congratulations on that win at Lernerville. Um, looks like you and your team have got a lot of momentum as you roll through these fall months. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, we ran third Friday and won Saturday, so definitely have a lot of confidence going into Williams Grove, a track that is, you know, one of my better tracks historically. So, uh, with it paying seventy five thousand on Saturday, definitely uh, looking forward to that. David, we just talked with Brian Brown. We talked a lot about Williams Grove and how it is a little bit. It's just different. It's one of those tracks that you kind of have to drive differently, and it's it's, it's difficult. There's the the hometown crowd that's obviously really strong. What is it about Williams Grove? I, I still want to talk a little bit about your win at Lernersville, but I, I want to talk Williams Grove. What is it about Williams Grove that just has suited your driving style? I don't really know, but it was my first racetrack I ever raced at in a sprint car, so maybe that has something to do with it. But it's just so unique. It's got pretty much two drag strips, and then you got to make a hard left. Um, you, you go so fast on the straightaway, and it buries the car so hard on the left rear and the right front's barely on the ground, and uh, you still got to make the corner. So it just uh, it's a unique place, and I don't think there's another place like it. Let's do tuck back, uh, step back a little bit and talk about Lernerville Speedway. Um, you know, solid starting spot, solid not going into the A-Main. Just kind of describe the A-Main. Pretty good battle with Wayne Johnson. Brad Sweet was up there as well. Just kind of describe what uh, what you what you faced there in that A-Main on Saturday night. Yeah, so I started on the pole, and uh, Wayne Johnson got the jump and, uh, you know, took off my air going in the one, and he kind of got the lead, and he led the first, uh, I don't know, 12, 13 laps, I believe. We, we closed there in second, had a shot in lap traffic, and Brad was able to squeak by me, and then the next lap he was able to get the lead, and uh, he passed a couple lap cars, and there was a big gap to the next lap car and pulled away by a few seconds. And then uh, I started to catch back up when he just started getting some more lap traffic, and the caution came out with like 13 to go, and I um, was able to get a pretty good restart. Uh, Brad didn't get too good of a restart, so he kind of protected in one and two. Kind of got a big run on the top and uh, was able to get blown down the back stretch. He was going lower and lower trying to protect, and I was pretty much in the infield going to three, and I had position, so I was sending her in there. And after that, I just uh, went as fast as I could to get to the checkered, uh, and, and luckily – some lap cars kind of went my way and were, were out of my lane I was running and was able to get to the finish. David, when you talk about that that move, and you, you mentioned even Wayne kind of taking the air off you, chopping you at the start of the race, that that is like a, a split-second decision, not even a split second, to, to make whether you're going to continue in full send like you did or, or not. In that moment in the car, is it, I mean, obviously it's a judgment call. You, you hope you've got the space, whatever, but are those moments a little bit of a pucker? <laughs> Pucker factor moment if you you full send in like here we go hope for the best. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, on the first lap, you don't need to do anything to put yourself in a bad spot. But um, I knew there on the restart that was kind of my chance to win the race if I didn't win the restart. So um, I felt like I had position uh, and, and it all worked out. So um, yeah, it, it's one of those things you don't like really think of it consciously. It's just mm -hmm. kind of like your natural, I guess ability doing it at the time and uh you know luckily i made the right call i think uh as we've talked about this world of outlaw season i know i have been guilty of coronating brad sweet the champion um and when we look at the turn of events over the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks uh and knowing where we're going to williams grove a place where you had multiple wins and and uh and and, and brad has yet to get to victory lane um, how do you keep that point battle in, is it in the forefront of your mind or do you just go night by night and check the points afterward? How do you, how do you judge that now that you're, now that you're within the sniffing distance of, uh, of Brad there? Yeah. You know, uh, we had a couple bad nights, uh, really only one bad night out in California, but Brad was, I think in the top five every night. So we lost some points out there and Man, it, it, it's a pretty big gap, but anything's possible. But at the end of the day, I'm just worried about winning races. Uh, I, I tried to beat Carson and Brad as many nights as I can because we're all kind of in a points battle there. So it's one of those things you just try to maximize your night every night. Um, everything else is going to take care of itself. But it's the first year together as a team, and uh, we didn't expect the, to win the championship uh, year one. So. We're just trying to get better, learn every night, because we learn no matter how much you race, you, you're still learning. So uh, we're just trying to win races, and 
uh, you know, try to run consistently, and uh, hopefully we can do that for the rest of the year. David, you mentioned this being your first uh, season with this team, and, and that was going to be my next question. You Here you are somewhat battling for the points lead. You've got uh, multiple, you've got 10 wins so far this season. Um, talk about the year. You and Cody Jacobs hit it off. You obviously have great backing with Todd. Uh, what has the season been like, I mean, from your perspective? Obviously, it's been a strong one, but it's pretty impressive for for first year with a new team. Yeah, I think we started off in the middle of the season kind of average and you know, was was kind of just hanging around, but not really getting many top fives or top threes, and didn't didn't challenge for too too many wins. And uh, I felt like around the summer months we started getting rolling and uh, won a race at Weedsport, and then we were good at, at uh, Peavley and uh, Knoxville. We were strong and won the Capitani and won our prelim night, and you know was able to to win a race after Knoxville, so uh, won at Chico, so. I feel like the later part of the year has been good. Uh, we had two heartbreaks with blowing an engine at Knoxville and being light at the scales at Kings Royal. So those were two bummers, but I felt like all the big money races we have been in contention uh, or at least had a chance to win the race. So um, overall, it's been good. Um, you know, saying it's average in the beginning of the year, it, I'm, I'm not lying, but luckily we've been able to, to win some races here the last couple of months and uh, really turn it up and to get 10 wins in, in a world of all off season is pretty hard to do and uh, I did the third time in my career with three different cars so um, it just shows that uh, it, it's something that's not easy to do I could tell you that I am sure but it shows the talents you have for sure behind the wheel of a sprint car before we let you go um, these are home games for you I understand you're from Connecticut this is Pennsylvania but it's as close as it gets you've got Williams Grove this weekend and then Port Royal next weekend um, are you in Connecticut are you going to get a chance to go home um, how, how is that working from a travel perspective David yeah me and my sister super trucked it after Lernerville we were on a little bit of a high so um we we drove all the way to Connecticut uh Saturday night and the Sunday morning got here at 7 a.m. and uh it was my grandparents 65th wedding anniversary at our house so I went to bed at 7 woke up at noon and my whole family was here so uh I'm I'm here for in Connecticut for this week and then we'll go to Williams Grove I'll go home after Williams Grove and then go to Port Royal and then go home again so I'll be able to spend the next three weeks during the week here, and uh, it's always good to do that and spend time with the family. Awesome. Cool stuff. I know your family is so near and dear to you, and they're wonderful folks, so uh, not a bad spot to be spending time with those people, that's for sure. David, we wish you the best this weekend at Williams Grove, the National Open, $75,000 to win. Congratulations on the Learner Book success, and thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thanks. Are you guys going to Port Royal? No, I'm not. I'm this this other job thing is in the way. Um, oh, geez. Man, the I know. I know, man. I got to get my priorities well, straight. I'll here. see you at the World Finals. Yeah, I'll see you World at the uh, Finals. All right. Yeah, she'll see you at the World Finals. I'll see you at Lakeside because my real All job right. my real job takes me to <laughs> Kansas that weekend. So um, I can't I can't I can't complain about the real job too bad when it takes me to World no. Football races. So no, that, man, that's not else. too bad. You're doing fine. I'm doing all right. Thanks, David. Thanks, guys. There we go. David Gravel joining us here on Wing Nation. Hey, Ashley. What are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high-quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. Flow Racing is the home of grassroots racing, with over 1,300 races streaming live in 2021. Watch the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, World 100, Dirt Late Model Dreams, Sweet 16, and much, much more. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. From sprint cars on dirt to SK Modifieds on pavement, arena cross, drag racing, and everything in between, it's here, live, and on demand. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash MRN. 
Just like racing components, aggressive hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile style single stage cylinders as well as multi stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no one size fits all approach with aggressive hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at aggressivehydraulics.com. Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, continues on. Uh, sad news this weekend. Uh, we lost uh, a friend, a, a friend to anybody that has ever broadcast anything sprint car racing. 2019 National Sprint Car Hall of Famer Greg Stevens uh, lost his battle to cancer. Um, Aaron, I think it's I think it's safe to say that the the sport may or may not have gotten to television and where it all has gotten to with pay per view. But boy, I'm telling you what, Greg Stevens was a guy that accelerated that to the nth degree. Without a doubt. I mean, I don't know the, the specifics, but I, I've always heard people talk about whether it was at Speed Channel or, or just people at the, in Dirt Vision talking about how he used to, or his, uh, Mindy, saying he drove around in that van and he would video the races, then he would edit them in his van and he'd drive to the nearest airport to, you know, airship them so they would get on the highlight reels. Uh, obviously, was a, a huge influence in, in just really even expanding the word of, of sprint car racing and dirt racing. He started in uh, 90, uh, 1985, produced an El, Eldora Four Crown Nationals mm-hmm. video, which got the attention of Dave Despain, who was with Motor yep. Week Illustrated, and he was a freelancer for Dave. And so he would send these tapes that you talked about. He would send these tapes to Dave. Well, then Pat Patterson had the Sunday morning show. Yeah. Uh, he'd and Pat be like, well, hey, don't, don't. So he'd make a couple copies and send one to Pat. And then a television station in, in Iowa, a television station, in Pennsylvania yeah. or a television station in California and he'd be driving in the middle of the night to try to get to airports you know this is not like file sharing downloads that we do no, now this like was old school click yeah on your cell phone exactly from 1987 to 2004 he put 840,000 miles on his van <laughs> for the world of outlaws I mean, just unreal, critical in what we do. And so, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where we are here, we have a television program, we have these podcasts that are video streamed. When we do video stream, we've got B-roll footage of David Gravel and Brian Brown going around racetracks and and doing all of this. And yeah, I, I, I think the sport would have gotten here. But boy, I'm telling you what, it got here a whole lot quicker and with a whole lot of class with Greg Stevens doing all the work Absolutely. that he did. Absolutely. And, and and more importantly than that, if you're friends with Mindy or, or Nick on social media, the outpouring of support oh. that has come through, oh. I mean, it's from any single person, everyone I've ever met in the, in the industry, plus people I've never met who are just, it just shows what kind of character he was a, away from his work. Really, really, truly does. So... Um, our heartfelt condolences to Mindy and Nick and to everyone in the um, in the, the the Stevens family, but also everyone in the Sprint Car family. This is a loss for everybody mm-hmm. in the Sprint Car family. Uh, this is not our Hall of Fame piece, but he is forever enshrined mm-hmm. in the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, and we will watch his video forever mm-hmm. of Sprint Car races and racers doing their thing as he was doing our thing. So. Uh, again, uh, rest in peace and uh, Godspeed to our buddy Greg Stevens, who passed away this past weekend. Uh, we've got a busy week coming up here on Wing Nation. Brian Holbert, it is, we talked a lot today about Williams Grove and mm-hmm. Williams Grove's National Open, but it's the Short Track Nationals weekend yeah. as well. Woo, man, I-30 <laughs> is just going to be on fire this weekend, so we're going to talk to Brian Holbert about that. And then, well, for our television program, Wing Nation TV, presented by Sage Fruit. Logan Schuhart joins us. So lots and lots of great conversation as well. Wing Nation again at www.wingnation.com. We appreciate Brian Brown and David Gravel for joining us. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength.